It's time for another Board Recap Podcast. Here we are in the fall season of the year. How are you today, Dr. Smith? You know, I love fall. I think it is absolutely my favorite time of year. And as we sit here, it's difficult to believe that the first quarter is finished. Yes, you're <laughs> this right. This is the week of the fall festival, which right. is just a great community celebration. And the West Side Net Club does so many outstanding things, not only for schools, but for our, our area nonprofits. Uh, yeah, we were lifted that recently. I think it was what seven hundred thousand dollars they gave to area nonprofits. I right. mean, yeah. incredible. Yeah, so it's great time of year, and uh, the seasons do march on. Yes, they do. Well, let's take a look at last night's school board meeting. In the grand scheme of things, it was a shorter school board meeting uh, because of the agenda. So we'll start with good news. From last night, uh, just lifted the fact, uh, major kudos to all those individuals at the high school level a couple of weeks ago when we had to bump those games back because of weather to Saturday. They pivoted and pulled it off, and it takes a lot of behind-the-scenes action, not to mention coaches and players and families and uh, all the volunteers to make these football games go off without a hitch, and they did that very quickly. And uh, so just kudos to everyone involved with our high school football games. Uh, we've got the EVSC Options Fair coming up, and we're promoting this heavily because these are great opportunities in high school. Uh, this is specifically for eighth graders to come to. Um, it is going to be on Thursday, October 24th at the Career and Tech Center on Lynch Road. It starts at 5, goes through 745. There's going to be booths set up. There's going to be students from those programs. There are adults from those programs. You can go to evscschools.com to see a full list of them. But we're talking about things like early college high school and uh, the Academy for Science and Medicine. I won't go through every one now, but we're sending out flyers. You're going to hear commercials for these. But these are really programs that a lot of school districts don't have, Dr. Smith, and we take a lot of pride in them. We certainly do. And, you know, just looking at that list of uh, innovative models, you know, when I was a student in our high school, granted it was a few years ago. But, <laughs> a couple. Uh, I still uh, recall that time in my life quite fondly because I had a phenomenal education mm -hmm. with EVSC. But those are, as you alluded to, those are innovative models that you won't find in other school no. districts. Certainly won't find them in other school districts around here. Just think about the Academy for Science and Medicine. Uh, individuals not only interested in, in medical professions, but also interested in science. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a hands-on, embedded opportunity for students uh, that even medical school students don't get many of those experiences until their second or third year of med school. Uh, and that's just one example. Um, and then when we think about the early college high school, so many of those students yes. end up with at least one associate's degree, many with two associate's right. degree. Before they ever even before they yes. graduate high school. <laughs> right. Think of the head start right. that gives them then when they pursue college and a bachelor's degree. Right. And I think the thing that I really want people to understand, especially if you're the parent of an eighth grader, come to the options fair, go online, check these options out. You don't have to sign your student's life away that night. Your right. student comes along. They can ask questions. I think it's important to note, though, that most of these programs are half-day programs. We provide the transportation. So if you are still an eighth grader, Dr. Smith, and you're thinking, I don't want to leave my friends at Central High School or wherever you go. Don't have to. You get the best of both worlds. You get to Got spend it. half of your day at your home school with your friends doing the things you want after school activities. And then you get to go to these programs that are, are catered to your special interests and you get to meet more students. We've heard that from kids saying, I made all yeah. kinds of new friends that I would have never met before. So check this out again. It's October 24th, five o'clock at the Career Center on Lynch Road. Absolutely. Um, also, last night, we talked about kudos to Oak Hill Elementary School. Again, you and I talked about them the last time for uh, a recognition they received. And this time, they were recognized in Indianapolis with the governor and the Department of Ed for being one of the state schools that had over a 95% pass read on the third grade I-read reading test. So they've really uh, had a banner year so far. So yes, congrats to everyone that's an Oak Hill Wildcat. Uh, also, we talked about Harrison High School. They were on Channel 14 Sunrise Spirit Friday, and they really had a great showing. These students started arriving 
little after 5 a.m. They showed their school spirit. They had an incredible amount of donations that's going to benefit canned food items, box food items for the Tri-State Food Bank. Um, they always are creative in how they do the designs. They put their uh, warrior mascot, the head of that, using cans and peanut butter jars. So uh, just a great way to showcase warrior pride. Really proud of those students and the staff. That Hope you could that. just tell our listeners <laughs> what else they did during this. Well, I, I think it's interesting, too, and all of our, especially high schools, because we know how many activities, but all schools. But if you think of this at the high school level and talking to the individuals there that morning, they couldn't even set up this elaborate can display until the night before, after the last volleyball game, which was senior night. So a team of adults and students jumped in, did this, did this design, didn't leave till between 1030 and 11 o'clock that night. They were back at 5 a.m. for Sunrise Spirit. Not to mention it was homecoming. We all know what a special event that is and takes a lot of planning. And then a home football game that night. So some of these folks almost lived at school from Thursday through Friday night. And uh, that's a testament to their commitment. Absolutely. Plus in the crowd were a number of Harrison's community partners. Yes, so for sure. I, I tell you, Harrison is a very, very special school. It's mm -hmm. one of the most underrated schools, I think, in this entire mm -hmm. region. But the sense of family and community that they have built there not just with Harrison students and families, but with the entire Harrison community it is really something to be seen. And you could just feel oh, the spirit. It was fun being the television there. set. Yes. Last Friday. Yeah. Really enjoyed getting to be there. So great job to the Harrison warriors. Um, and then last but not least, this is something all of us can take a lot of pride in. Recently we were notified that, um, and this is very competitive. EVSC joined the league of innovative schools, uh, it's a network of more than 150 school districts across the country. Actually, I think it's capped at 100. Capped at, sorry, capped at 150 school districts. And this only happens for school districts that are really showing demonstrated proof of their commitment to high standards, equity, excellence, innovation, collaboration, leadership. What else would you like to say? I mean, it's a great honor. Well, you know, uh, last night in the board meeting or Monday night in the board meeting, I, uh, really wanted to thank the board for their leadership because without their leadership, we would not sure. be recognized in this manner. It, it is so easy, almost tempting today when everyone is so incredibly busy to just do what it is you've always That's done. That's true. But you get in the habit of it, right? By maintaining that status quo, rarely, if ever, do you show improvement. So we are a district that embraces continuous improvement. Sometimes that's a little frustrating and challenging because we're not satisfied with where we are, never will be, always want to, to do a better job for our students in our community. And that requires a certain DNA, if you will, that always wants you to think of that innovative approach, that approach, that new approach that's based upon research, and understanding that there is a better way and we want to find it. Well, well said. And I know as superintendent, this has to bring you great pride too, just working in a district that gets to be a part of this league and this network. I mean, it really is something on the national level like yeah. that has to be well, very meaningful. And it's great on a national level when the team that you work with every day is recognized for their efforts. Absolutely. So that wraps up a lot of good news last night, yeah. as always, to share. And if you will take us through consent, please. I will be happy to. So let's jump in at item 3.02, consideration allowance of payments for this two-week period of Time, it was $11,937,947.58. Very typical for this time of year. Uh, frequent viewers of this, when you click on that attachment, may see that there were some insurance payments that are certainly smaller than what you typically see when we look at health insurance. However, that's due to insurance uh, deductions for dental, for vision, for disability, those kind of things. Oftentimes those are aligned to health insurance, but this time it was not. So that's why that looks a little bit different. But as I said, very typical for this two week period of time, this time of year. Item 3.03, .03, consideration to approve grant proposals. Though there was only one grant uh, submitted this time, and that was by Chris Gibson, the outstanding principal of our New Tech Institute. And that was to the Rev Robotics Team Scholarship. And Rev Robotics uh, is a supplier of robotics parts uh, throughout the world. And they award anywhere from five to $10,000. 
Um, and we're hopeful that New Tech will be a recipient of one of those grants. And uh, in a related topic, I think they're getting ready in the near future to unveil this year's robot. I saw, and that's always an exciting event when they kind of showcase their new robot. That truly is uh, always. <laughs> what a great experience for these students. And I'm sure we will publicize when Absolutely. that is. That's open to the public to yes. come in to see the, the really great things that our students do. Right. Moving on to item 3.04, consideration to prove the reinsurance renewal. So this is something that uh, may be somewhat unusual. Because yeah, if you could explain that to us. Certainly. A lot of people may not know what that means. So we are self-insured. So we are able to purchase what is called reinsurance um, or kind of stopgap, which means that we will provide dollar for dollar uh, claims payment up to $325,000 per each insured individual. So when it goes above $325,000, we've actually purchased insurance for those kind of claims uh, so that we're capped at $325,000 per, as we call it in the trade, belly button. Uh, so what that means is then we have insurance for our insurance. And uh, really pleased with Epic. Once again, they were able to advocate on our behalf and negotiated an expected increase of 8%. They negotiated that down to 3.99%, which saved us nearly $70,000 on the reinsurance. But it's one of those things that kind of is a hidden cost that people don't understand there is. We do not pass this on to employees. Um, it's something, though, that we just pay as part of the cost of doing business and providing outstanding insurance benefits to our employees. And once again, our health insurance premiums will remain the same this year as they were last year. Which is really incredible. It is, I think, a testament to all of the work that we put in to not only having great access to a variety of plan benefits, being self-insured, but also individuals that are insured through EVSC have access to a health and wellness center at no cost to them. And that helps us keep our costs low because right. we can control the clinic costs, which then means that we control the spend that we are spending and still have our individuals have access to great health and wellness. And when we save on the cost of insurance, that's money then we can dedicate to salaries, salaries. and wages. Absolutely. Yeah. Item 3.05, consideration to approve, approve the petition to the Indiana Department of Education for the Common School fund loan. So uh, once again, they have released these funds this fall, uh, and we are very appreciative of that because we have utilized these funds for so many things when it comes to technology. We are anticipating refreshing our third grade uh, Chromebooks with this fund <clears throat> if it is awarded to us, and we certainly hope that it is. Moving on to item 3.06, consideration to approve change order number one, for the 2024 playground project at Stockwell Elementary School. So there were really three bullets here. We did add an eight inch concrete curb barrier that helped with the transition of the existing asphalt into the new playground surface. We also utilized an existing swing set, but it was a little bit too high, so we had to adjust the height of that swing set. And then the third bullet is we did add a four foot fence uh, to the north side of the playground, and that's about 530 linear foot. So that's the reason for that change order, which raised the amount of this contract, $23,565. Item 3.07, consideration for the increase for substitute pay. So um, frequent listeners may recall that we utilized ESSER funds to add $40 to every substitute that subbed for a teaching position. Uh, now that ESSER funds have gone away, it was important for us to help our subs knew that that enhanced pay was going to continue. So we needed board action to, first of all, approve that. And it, in doing so, actually approved a different funding source. But we want our subs to know that if you are a substitute teacher under sub permit, it's 120 a day. A teaching license with a substitute teacher is 125, and retired teachers earn $150 a day. And then also, if teachers work 16 days, substitutes work 16 days in that position, then we up their pay to the dollar amounts that you can see on the 
page uh, if you click on it in Board Docs. And we certainly appreciate our dedicated substitute teachers because they play a very valuable role in all of our schools. Absolutely. No question about that. I won't go through all of the various uh, employee classifications here, but with our cert our non-certified staff, or otherwise we call them our classified staff, so these would be paraprofessionals, secretaries, bus attendants, mm -hmm. bus drivers, custodians, all of that. Uh, basically what we've done is we've, for the vast majority of those job classifications, we have raised the substitute rate to the beginning hourly rate for that position. Okay. And then moving on to item 3.08, consideration approved para or professional service agreement with Carla Kelly. So from time to time, uh, changes are made in the academic standards. Uh, we also certainly take recommendations from our teachers, um, and there are a variety of ways in which things and resources are changed. Uh, we have not replaced some positions, so we don't have the capacity to keep those things current as we'd like to keep them current. So uh, Carla Kelly is a former teacher of ours and uh, knows us, knows this material very well. So we have uh, entered into a contract with her to keep our resources up to date for our teachers. And then finally, under consent 3.09, consideration to approve the renewal with the CDWG for network storage and maintenance. Uh, so this contract not only provides uh, the opportunity for us to maintain our backup systems, it also purchases the storage for that, the equipment. Um, and it is important to have redundancy since we are so dependent <laughs> upon technology and the data that we have. This ensures that if one system would go down, we have redundancy in another system that will keep us up to date and keep our data safe. For sure. Uh, so, so important when we talked to our new chief technology officer recently, I mean, just going through with him and talking about making sure all of the systems have backups and are in place because we certainly can't take that for granted right. and we always have to be prepared. So Absolutely. that wraps up consent uh, personnel recommendations. Then. So under 4.01 personnel, personnel recommendations, probably shouldn't put those two words together. <laughs> personnel recommendations. Michelle Williams presented that uh, to our board. And as we say during this time, a copy of that is included on board docs for your perusal. Okay. And then we had no action items last night, which that's not typical, but we did have one information item. We did item 6.01, which is a consideration to prove updates to policies 3010, which is our criminal history checks for applicants, contractors, and volunteers, as well as 3120.08 extracurricular education requirements for our activity sponsors, coaches, and volunteer coaches. That was presented by our chief of stack, Rick Cameron. And <clears throat> with that, basically we bring our policies, excuse me, <clears throat> we were able to bring our policies uh, from basically three down to two. We condensed we eliminated policy, I think it's 6120, um, and we brought them all in line. A lot of this was in response to additional services provided to us by Raptor Volunteer Management, but it's always great to improve the clarity, to make sure that the language is very tight. Um, we eliminated some redundancies, so uh, appreciate the attentive nature that our board has to policies because that is an important part of their work. And then all of the chief of staff's office who really commingles all of these things together with the advice of the Indiana School Board Association, their legal counsel, and our legal counsel. Uh, many, many hands are embedded in these uh a lot of behind the scenes policies work right. <laughs> takes place. Yeah. And you can always go to our website, evscschools.com, and you can actually see all of these policies if you're looking at other ones outside of the ones that you'll see right. being updated during school board meetings. And actually, if you are a frequent viewer of board docs, if you look at That's one true of the too. headers, yeah. you can click on policies, you can see the active, you can see the draft, you can see the retired. All of those things are there. If you click on active, then over on the left-hand side, you will see all of the various sections, section one thousand is school board governance so you can click on that pull down any policy 
that the EVSC has approved. Okay, thanks for sharing that. As you said at the beginning, Dr. Smith, this wraps up this board meeting. Of course, we've wrapped up first grading period already, hard to believe, first quarter of the year. Here it is, Fall Festival Week, and next week is fall break, and our students and our staff certainly deserve an ice break. Yes, they do. Hopefully, it will be great weather like we're having this week for the Fall Festival. And just a hat off uh, to all of our staff, uh, teachers, cafeteria, bus drivers, everybody that works on behalf of our students in Vanbrugh County. Thanks so much for helping us have a great first quarter, and we look forward to having everybody back after fall break and having another great second quarter. And before you know it, that'll be time for winter. Yeah, yes, it will. Well, thank you for everything, Dr. Smith. You have a good fall break as well, and thank you so much. Thank you.